Hey guys, it's May May. And recently in a live show, we made this little four by four album, which I think is so cute and will be such a cute gift to use in so many different ways this holiday season. And you guys asked me to do a standalone video so you can get all the measurements. But when I was doing it and designing this video, I wanted to add something. I thought this would be so cute to do as a 12 days album. But as it sits, this guy only holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten photos because on the back side it's the front cover. So I did a little edit to make this one fit 12. So that way we can use it for 12 days or we could do it for the 12 months of. You see where I'm going with that? So that's what we're going to do. Now this one's going to go together a lot like that first four by four, but because I'm changing up and adding some photos, I'm going to make some edits here as well. So let's do our first score marks, okay? So with this guy in your scoreboard on the eight and a half inch side, I want you to score it at two, two and a half, six and a half, and seven. Now let me tell you what this is going to be. This two is going to be your top flap. And I'll show you how to remember where that is in just a second. Now we're going to turn it to the seven and three quarter side. So I want you to score this one at one and a half, then one and three fourths. This is where we're making some changes, okay? Five and three fourths and six. And you'll see why we're doing these smaller side gussets so we can add that photo. Now, let me show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna trim these corners down and get this ready to add our flaps. So I'm gonna start in all four corners and we're gonna cut away some marks. I'm gonna start by cutting away the score marks in the corners all the way up to where they intersect in the middle. Do you see that? Let me cut this off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So cutting away the score marks. So you can see here, I went all the way up to there, leaving my gussets under, but taking the gussets off on the side corners. Now just do that on all four corners. So now you can see your quarter of an inch gussets are the side and your half inch are the top and bottom. The other thing I wanna point out is your taller flap is the top of the book and the smaller flap is the bottom. But to help me remember, cause I'm really bad at this, I'm gonna go ahead and corner around this top flap using my corner punch and on the half inch round is what I'm going to do, the half inch rounder there. So I can remember this is my closing flap. Let me show you what that is. If you compare them, it is this. Do you see the top? That's going to help me remember where to glue or where not to glue. Now let's get our flaps ready. Now where this one has a bigger edit than the first four by four we did, the first one we used two pieces that were eight by four. In this one, we're gonna use three, okay? So we can add those extra photos. Now on your eight by four piece, put it in your scoreboard at the eight inch side and score it at four and do that to all three pieces. So now we need to fold and crease on all of our score lines. When you get to this point, if you struggle with that little quarter of an inch, I've heard a lot of you guys say you struggle with that. Let me show you what you can do. You can take the edge of your scoreboard or the edge of your table or desk and press this down like this and kind of get it started. And it really does help you make that fold. That little quarter of an inch gusset can be a little fussy to do, but just use, it's actually better to use the corner of your desk, but if you need to use the edge of your scoreboard and it works just as well, then you can kind of just push it into place. And I'll finger crease it and then put it down. Let's do the other side. So I've got everything folded and creased. Let's make our flaps for the photos. So now that you've got these guys creased in the middle and then folded, let's install them. Now I wanna do the bottom flap first, but let me tell you why. My side flaps, I typically glue them right to the top like this. But this bottom flap, because it is the closure of my book, I wanna make sure I glue this piece this way, if that makes sense, instead of gluing the big piece on top, because if I glue the big piece on top, this line shows on the front of the book. Now I cover it anyway, but I like it better kind of hidden. So I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna add glue to my flap. Now I may have to turn this flap backwards. I just folded it in half. I may have to edit the way this um, photo flap lays, but we'll do that in a few minutes. All right, so I'm gonna line this up to my score mark. And I just want to be at the score mark. I don't want to be over it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm even going to lay it down like this so I can see where I'm at. 
and get that in place and rub that down. So you see what I mean by gluing that flap underneath, the front of my album is nice and clean. And guess what? This is going to work. That's how I wanted it to close, just like that. Perfect. Let's do the side flaps. For these flaps, I can glue right on the top. It will not matter. They don't take front and center, so we can cover them with paper and they'll be just fine. Again, don't cover your score mark. Go right to the score mark and you'll want to test and make sure. So what I do is just kind of lift up, just make sure we're where we need to be and then press that down. So you got that arm out. Let's do this arm. We'll put this one down just the same. Now I want to show you something. You see that right there? This is for two reasons. If you get this at home, do not panic. We're just going to trim it off. It's for two reasons. Number one, if you are not super consistent with your trimmer and put it at the same place every time, you'll get a little extra. Add that little extra to the score marks that we cut away, because if you remember, we cut away the whole score mark here. That gives us sometimes a little hangover, but you can see here I'm fine. I didn't get one too bad there, and I didn't get one too bad here, but here I was a little bit off. So you know what I'm gonna do? Put it in my trimmer and trim it down. So let's talk about how this guy's gonna close up because we got this extra photo mat we have to deal with, okay? So on the right-hand side, I'm gonna fold this one in. I think I'm even gonna crease it again for good measure. And then I'm gonna fold it in again, okay? That is gonna be, I don't even have to do anything. I was gonna crease that again, but it's good. That is gonna be the first fold in. Now for this side, instead of folding it under and closing it like this, I need some room. And I only have this quarter inch gusset, right? This guy's gonna get folded this way, but I'm gonna fold this flap back. All right, so let me crease that one into place. So basically the bulk that I'm building here on this particular flap is gonna be in my half inch gusset, not in my quarter inches on the side. So does that make sense? So this will open this way, and then this guy will open and open, okay? So now what we can do, because we've added this extra photo flap, it can just fold up, fold over, and we can close this guy nice and square and look how it can hold all of the thickness we're gonna be adding in a few minutes. Isn't that cool? We just had to make that little bit of adjustment and fold just a little bit different to make it all fit. Let's decorate. Breaking in here to ask you to hit that red subscribe button. It's free. Also hit the bell button beside it. You can help me reach my big goal this year of 400,000 subscribers. Okay, back to crafting. For decorating today, I'm going to use these guys. This is the Holiday Wishes Pack from 49 and Market. And I'm also going to use this little frame from our um, Oh Snap stamp set. I think this will be cute. So let me start by doing this. I'm not going to go to the ephemera first. I'll save that. I'm going to go here first. Now, you don't have to use a six by eight, but the reason I like it is because it allows me to get two pieces of matte cardstock from one sheet without having just waste from a 12 by 12. It's fine to use a 12 by 12. You'll just have extra scraps, but I like using these pieces for backgrounds. Oh, look how cute that is. I may put that on the front. Let's hold that out there. I'm going to flip through and find my pieces. For these pieces, I need 14 um, matte pieces that are cut three and three fourths by three and three fourths. Now, one of those is my cover, and I'll show you what I'm going to do for that one. I love this little truck. I think I'm gonna let that be my cover. So what I'm gonna do is turn this sideways and cut it at three and three fourths and then cut it down to three and three fourths and I'll show you where it's gonna live. So it'll go right here and won't that be cute? So when the little flap comes over, the little truck will show. I love that. I don't know what I'm gonna put here yet. We'll figure that out, but I'm just gonna run through and cut all these pieces to glue in. Now for my flap, I need to cut two pieces that are an inch and three-fourths by three and three-fourths. So I want front and back. Now inside my little booklet, I have the half-inch gusset pieces, and I want to cover those. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to tape down this little strip to three-eighths. It's a half-inch strip that was kind of left over, but I want to tape it down like this to hold it in place. I'm going to sink my blade in the middle and then go up and down so I can get a three-eighths inch strip. I think that'll be cute, and I think I can use this one in the middle. It might be too small. Let me look. Like here in the quarter inch, I don't know. I think that'll work. I think it'll be super cute, so we may use that one there. I'm going to put it aside, and then I'm going to cut these down to three and three-fourths as well. Now, before I go to gluing everything in, I want to cut the pieces I need for that stamp I showed you. And those pieces are three inches wide 
cut that three inches wide by three and three eighths. That's what size I decided to use um, for the little picture frames. So there is three and three eighths. And I'm going to do 12 of these. And I may do extra because if I'm going to be stamping, I might as well have an extra one just in case I mess one up while I'm putting it together. So I'm going to cut 12 of these. So I've already loaded the little picture frame up onto my Misty. And I'm also using the place photo here from the action stamp set. I thought this was a cute size to put in the middle there. And so here's what those little pieces are for. Let me show you. I'm going to put them in the corner of my Misty. And I put one in the corner earlier and then I laid this over so I could see that it was gonna fit and it does. So now I can just ink this up and stamp. And I'm gonna stamp all of them because I want 12 little Polaroid frames. So I'm just gonna ink that up and send it over. Rub that down, peel it off. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna make 12 of those. So I wanna tell you this, um, I've had some people asking me, why am I doing Christmas so early and so often this time of year? Cause it's only August. Well, here's the thing. Crafters craft for Christmas. They don't craft at Christmas. And if I want to get these little present ideas or these gift ideas to you in time for you to be able to make them and have them in November and December when you're handing out Christmas present or holiday presents, I have to get a jump. So that's why we do Christmas early. And um, if you've known me for any length of time and you follow my channel for any length of time, you know July is when I start. And I always tell you I'm Christmas as much as I can or fall. Once uh, we finish Christmas in July, we just let it keep going. Now, I will tell you, these are going to fit on our pages, but you see how there's a little, a pretty good bit of room around here. If you want to cut them right down to your stamped edge, you might want to do that. It may show up better, and I may decide to do that. I wasn't sure when I started, so I just went ahead and cut the size I needed to give a good um, border, but I may decide to cut these right down to the little the photo itself. Let's give it a look. Okay, let's go back to our album, which I have opened up now. And I want to go ahead and put the pages on that I know I want them to live in a certain place. You know how I am about that, right? I don't want to accidentally glue something in a wrong spot. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one piece here. All right, so there's the front. I'm going to also go ahead and put something on the back so I know I don't use it somewhere else. And you know me, for the back, I always like to use something that's not my favorite, but I wanted to use this piece that came on the cover of the um, package. I thought it was a great place to, to use it, and it's a beautiful pattern. It's just not one I want to use, you know, in the forefront. We'll put it back here, and it will do a great job. Now, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to run through. I need to corner around these, glue them down, and I'm just going to glue my pattern paper down. Okay, I need a skid skid the brake sound effect right here because this is where I almost forgot to put my magnet on. I'm notorious for that. So let me get a magnet. These are the magnets I'm going to be using. They're the small version of the basic gray magnet. So I'm going to use a set of those. And what you do is you put them together. They have a plus and a minus. You put them together like so, and you reveal the sticky back and place it down. Now this one, for some reason, I had revealed the sticky back before, and I might have I might have stuck this to a page and decided not to use it. So I'm going to add some glue because I'm afraid it might have lost some of its sticky. You don't have to add glue. They work really well either way. Also, I want you to see how far down I'm sticking this. You see, I've got like a finger width away. If you don't do that, when you go to glue your paper over it, you won't get good adhesion to your little background there. Now for the other side, we're going to peel the backer off, revealing that adhesive. I don't need to add glue. I didn't need to add it to the other one. I just wanted to be safe, okay? Now I'm going to close this up, but you remember I tell you this all the time. Square this guy up before you turn your magnet over. All right, I need that sound effect again. Wow, what a day. I am not thinking ahead. Look, I've got to do an implant anyway, but y'all love it when I have to do a magnet implant. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, if you haven't heard of my infamous magnet implants, this is it. I tend to glue it down. I told you, I tend to glue this down before I'm supposed to. So here's what I do. If this happens to you too, and it might, take your, like a spatula. This is a Cricut spatula that I use. I slide it under there like this. Open that spot up. I hate to even teach you this because I don't want you to be like me in this instance. I want you to get it right the first time. Just remember to put your magnet down first. So I'm going to slide this little guy in and hopefully get him somewhere close. Did I get close? Okay, that was luck. That was pure luck, okay? Normally, you really want to do that ahead of time because there that would never happen normally. I got those to line up pretty close. So in the future, please make a note of that. Always plan your magnet placement better than I do. And listen, you'd think I'd learn, but I don't because I do it all the time. All right, so we're going to keep going. I'm going to put another piece here. Maybe I should use that sound effect. They'll never know, right? Okay, we did it. Now let's continue. 
Now, I want to tell you this. This album can be used for 12 pictures. The reason I wanted to make sure it had 12 is somebody mentioned to be cute to do like baby's first year or a photo from every year of school, you know, 12 years of school. That would be cute. I may not put 12 in here because I really like this page and I don't necessarily need 12 photos in here because I'm not making it a countdown. I'm just making it an album. But if you do need 12, you now have room because of that extra flap. Now I'm going to run through and add my photo spots. Now here's what I meant by you might want to cut them down. They fit. Do you see how they fit? They leave you a little bit of that showing, but if you cut them down, let me do one really quick. And then just as if I were fussy cutting, I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to go right around the edge to kind of clean that up and make it look solid. That's so cool how that works. It makes it look like a, a pre-cut piece for you. And you can see now how that will fit. It'll give me room to wiggle or whatever I want. Put it in the top corner and give me more space here. So I think I'm going to run through and do that. You don't have to. I just wanted to show you the option. So now that I've got all my little photo pieces and everything glued down, I'm going to go through the ephemera pack and pull out some pieces that are size appropriate for the album. Then I'll decide where to put where to place them. I love this little one that says, Hello December. I think I'm going to use it for the front cover. And I'm probably going to tie a piece of twine in it, like just a bow. I think that'll be cute and kind of put it here. Um, just as something on the front. So I'm going to put that one aside. We'll deal with that in a few minutes. Let's open up and just kind of see. So this is a great place for journaling. I'm going to let that one ride. Let's go to where there's a photo. Here's a good sample. See how it's all blue around it? We need to add some life to it. So there's all kinds of pieces from the ephemera set. Look, you could put this one here and then tuck the photo behind it. I think I have a better spot for that one, but we have this one that can go down here at the bottom. Look at this little Christmas tree. It could live right down here with the sentiment. I think that's the one. So here's what I'll do. I will put glue on the side and across the edge of the bottom like that. I'm not going to put these on foam. The reason is because this little album really can't handle the foam. It's already pretty snug. So I'm going to do this, and that way a photo can still slide underneath there. I even have all that room to glue in there, but it'll be fine. Then I think I'll get one of these little sayings, one of these little sentiment strips. This one says, making memories. That was my mom's favorite thing to say. I'm going to definitely put that one in. And that's what I'm going to do on the pages. Just run through and decorate them like that. So there you go, our little maybe Christmas brag book or your 12 days of book. This is how it works. There's the, the little top and it opens like this. And don't forget, this one opens again. That gets us two more pictures here. And then it opens out. Just look how cute this is. It's not hard to do. Easy to decorate, easy to get done. Look, I put trunks in two places, but you might want to think ahead. The reason I did this is because this photo actually laid the way I wanted it to go. So think ahead. You know I never do, obviously, by, by the magnet debacles that I have. Look at this. So cute, right? I think this would be a sweet little gift. Perfect stocking stuffer. And if you're so inclined, if you're a person who um, has this kind of time in your life, how cute would this be to make one for the table um, for Christmas morning, or if you have people over that come to visit, how cute would this be for everybody's place, like their place setting? Or even if you did one per family and they could take it home. Super cute. I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to call that one the 4x4 four four and more because now we've added some more to it. So the 4x4 four four folio and more. Look how pretty. The side is so thick and nice, right? All you got to do now is add photos and it's ready to go. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to reach that big goal and we're we're getting close and we're not, we're getting close on time to my goal, but we're not close on numbers. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free. It just helps me reach my 400,000 goal. Thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye now.